Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our third official webinar. Today, we are joined by experts from Stonehut Designs, Bob Go, and our very own Koka. Um, in today's webinar, we will unpack recipes for e-commerce success. We'll walk you through user experience best practices on how to grow your online store. We will walk you through easy ways to accept payments online, as well as how to optimize your logistics process and strategies. I'd like to uh, take a second to introduce our guests on the call. Uh, first, we have Sean representing Bob Go, a shipping and order management solution for SMEs and large businesses. Sean is essentially the operations manager within BobGo and he deals with order fulfillment and platform management. Welcome to the webinar, Sean. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. Very excited to see what this session will bring out for everyone. Wonderful. Second, we have from Stone Hut, Britt and Joe. Stonehut is a design agency that delivers high quality UI UX e-commerce website designs that are optimized for conversions and sales. They've been doing this for over 20 years and are certified WooCommerce experts. Brett is in charge of business development and Jill is the owner and founder of Stonehut Designs. Welcome to the call guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, morning. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. Nice to be here. Wonderful. Last but not least, we have representing Ikoka, uh, which you all know, uh, Graham, who is our Chief Product Officer. Lovely to have you on the call, Graham, and uh, keen to get into it. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, very keen for the next hour, uh, and welcome to everybody who's joined the call. Great. Let's get into it. So we've put together some thought-provoking questions from our audience in relation to e-commerce, um, specifically around best practices, as I've mentioned, accepting payments and the logistical leg of um, being an online business that I'd like to direct at our guests. And we'll just talk through these uh, questions that we've put together. Um, I'd like to start here, and this one's directed to Brett and Jill. Could you guys talk us through the key aspects to get right when transitioning an existing business into the e-commerce or online space? Yes, um, sure, Frank. Um, so it's always quite always quite daunting for, um, you know, a, a new client to, as you say, transition from an existing web, uh, existing store to, to the online space. There, there, there are lots of challenges. Um, I think the the, the 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 first thing with what we are putting together here with our partnership with the website, the payment and the shipping and making it sort of easy e-commerce as we're calling it, um, is we we've got the entire package ready for for a client to have everything all in one. They don't have to now find a shipping agent, they don't have to find a payment agent. Everything is all included. We've got excellent support from all the teams. So I think that's a huge challenge because a lot of times we find people, um, you know, when a client, a new client comes to us and they want to start an e-commerce, they have no idea where to start. They really don't. So it's great to have a full package ready um, that, you know, that's easy to use. We understand each other and it works well. In terms of in terms of how you how you move from the from the physical space to the online space, uh, we always we always recommend start small and grow. You know, a lot of people want to just jump in and have everything. Um, you know, lots of products online, but it's not the way. You know, learning learning the e-commerce, learning to run your e-commerce store is is quite is is quite new. It's very different to a physical store. You know, you are you are open 24-7. You have to have availability 24-7. You know, your physical shop, people come visit you when you open. It's very different online. So you really have to understand the online space and grow. So we always recommend start with um, your, your most popular products, for example. Put those online, start small and grow. Everything is about growth. You don't have to jump in with everything that's in your physical shop you, because you will fail. Um, you know, so rather be successful with what you what you can deliver. 
Um, and then obviously from, from our point of view, the website is key. Having a, a well-designed website that works for e-commerce and is going to convert sales is key. So there are obviously lots of different um, um, items that we could go through, um, which which make a well-designed website to convert. So I don't know if we want to go into all that sort of detail, um, but yeah, there, there, there's lots that goes into the actual website first um, to, to make it successful online, which is obviously where our expertise lie. Yeah, that's a really a perfect way to start this conversation. You know, start small. Uh, don't try to overcomplexify it. It is a new exactly. domain, and uh, there's still a lot to figure out in the space. Um, it's great to have you guys on the call as experts in the space who have dealt with multiple businesses. Um, and I think what you mentioned, that final point, is a great segue into the next question, which is about optimizing that customer experience, improving it so that um, business owners are seeing more sales, are seeing happier customers. Um, could you talk us through a little bit more how a business can practically improve the customer experience on their online store? Yes, sure. So yeah, the, the, again, there the are lots of aspects, but there's some key ones that obviously that obviously stand out that are very important to the overall online experience. At the end of the day, you want your visitor to come to the site, you want them to find what they're looking for, and you want them to purchase it. That's what you want. You want sales on your on, on your site. Um, so it all starts with with the with the design of the website. The first the first aspect I um. I bring up is the the actual um, site structure and the navigation. You know, if users are battling to find um, where to go on the site, how to find products, not having search functions, that's immediately they're going to leave the site and they're going to go and find a competitor site. I mean, I can't tell you the number of bad e-commerce sites out there uh, that just don't function well. Filters, you know, and and it's not difficult to get right if it's just well designed. So your 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 navigation is very important, easy to find what you're looking for. Um, the next thing that I find a huge thing, obviously, with e-commerce, because that's the core of the business, are the actual products. So so many times you'll click on a product and it won't have the information you won't uh, information you need. You know, if you buy if you're buying a fridge, you want to you want to know the dimensions of the fridge. Um, is it going to fit into the space that you need the fridge? Um, a lot of sites don't have that. They don't have the product information. Um, images. So again, having multiple images for one product is very important. Um, you want to see everything about the product. Product descriptions, obviously pricing. So products are, are key. And images, the images for the products. We find a lot of images of, of very poor quality. So that's obviously huge. Um, and then another big thing with e-commerce is the the trustworthiness of the website. We we know there are a lot of scammers out there who are running e-commerce sites that look legitimate, but they're actually not. So, you know, having reviews is very important. We always encourage customers to have reviews because I, I for one, when I'm buying something online, the first thing I look at is, are the reviews of that product. Um, as well as the website. Um, so uh, reviews are great. Um, having uh, more accreditation online, so your social platforms, they're also very important. Um, people are often go to a Facebook page or an Instagram page to see, you know, who is this company? Um, so that's always important. And then the, the, just, the, just the overall trustworthiness of the website, how you're going to pay, um, having your payment, um, Icons and that is also great. Um, and then obviously with um, Icorca and Bob Go as as um, and part of this call, the payment and the shipping, that's obviously very key. You know, the payment must work, the payment must be secure, uh, the shipping must be easy. You know, again, a lot of times you get to check out, you don't know what the shipping costs are going to be. So all those things make a streamlined, user-friendly experience and you should then get you know the visitor to check out and make a purchase um so those are probably some highlights that you know there are lots of other things like upselling um i find if you add an upsell bundle to your products it it, it generates more sales um that's always a, a a great a great um asset on the site um again another key 
um, component, which I also find a lot of sites don't have, is mobile uh, responsiveness. You, you would think these days that would just be right, but it, it just isn't. <laughs> so um, mobile responsiveness is is key, and mo most people are on their on their phones or their tablets searching. Uh, so that must that must be as streamlined as the desktop. Um, yeah, I think those are I think those are, are probably some of the, the 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 key items to you know successful e-commerce site. Beautifully put, Jill. I think that there are a lot of actionable points that you've made there. I believe that the business owners on the call um, are able to take away things that they can implement. I can personally resonate with a lot of the points that you have made because as a consumer, I've mm. interacted with, you know, the worst and the best websites. Mm. And the ones that really get me over exactly. the line are the ones that are, you know, ticking the boxes that you've mentioned. Great mm. navigation, um, good product catalog. I'm able to see it from different angles in good lighting, great reviews, get great checkout process um so really really well put Jill, and and really insightful um let's let's just uh, you know uh, summarize this point around getting up and running i think um speaking to our audience and seeing a lot of the feedback and questions that come back cost is a really important aspect of you know how to get up and running uh we are in a you know very volatile climate and mm -hmm. uh, business some businesses are penny pinching um other businesses are thriving but cost always remains quite a, a key factor in, in deciding who which service provider to go with, how to get up and running. And um, it, it, it tends to be sometimes a barrier to entry. I'd like us to maybe discuss a little bit around um, the Stone Hut Designs service offering, um, given that you guys are experts, clearly done this a lot and have really optimized uh, the websites of possibly hundreds of thousands of businesses. Um, I if I put myself in the shoe of a business owner, would want to uh, invest in a well-designed website. Could you talk us through the costs associated with um, investing in, in um, one of your services? Hmm. Sure. Um, so, you know, it's it's always it's always quite a difficult one to to talk about the cost because um, it it varies so much from business to business. Um, but again, if we talk about trying to just enter the space and just, you know, get up and running initially, um, it it can be quite a, um, it doesn't have to be a huge investment for what you're actually getting. So from our side, our, and we, I know we're offering a, a, a special at the moment for a WordPress website. Um, so to get that up and running is uh, 20,000 Rand for the entire website. That's building a UI UX design website. Um, it's adding, um, I think we've got a, between three and five categories and between 25 and 30 products that we that we will load. Um, and then obviously all the general content pages. So you always need an about us and you need a contact page um, and your general pages like privacy policies and returns and refunds. You know, all those are very important with e-commerce. People want to know, you know, what happens. Um, it also includes the, the standard SEO. So each page has its page title, all the images are tagged. Um, page descriptions, and then the site is submitted to Google search, so then it can start getting found on, on Google. Uh, it includes the, the mobile design, uh, which is obviously very important. Um, it includes the payment integration, the shipping integration, so it's a fully functional, by the time we've finished, it, it's, a, it's entirely fully functional e-commerce website that can go into business. So that's 20,000 Rand. Um, in terms of your running costs, uh, oh, and I should say it doesn't include any extra apps or plugins. You know, those are always extra, but those can always come, as I've talked about before. You know, you can grow into that. Um, there are obviously lots of different plugins one can add to the site that do various um, functionalities. So those then do bear a cost. Uh, the um, maintenance costs, there's the hosting, which is um, 115, that's an extra cost, that's an annual, that's on secure service. And then there's always site maintenance with the WordPress site, so um, if it's a very sort of standard site, then we look at once a year just updating everything and that takes a few hours. So it doesn't have to be a huge ongoing cost. 
um, you know, the more you add to the site, the more costly it becomes. That's basically how it works. Thanks for that, Joe. And then just to the audience, um, stick around towards the end of this webinar. We have a quite an exciting, um, you know, announcement around how we're going to partner together uh, between Bob Go Stone, Stonehut and Ikoka to, you know, try and alleviate some of these cost barrier to entries. So we've got a really exciting thing to uh, talk you guys through towards the end, but thank you for that breakdown, Jill. I think it gives people uh, a 360 understanding of what it's going to cost to get up and running. Mm. Obviously, given the, the quality of your services and how reputable it is, how um, it's going to optimize, increase conversions, and uh, set a business owner up for success, um, I think every penny is worth worth it, to be honest. I'd like us to transition now. We have the store up and running. It's a bit of a narrative uh, that we're creating. We have your store up and running. We've talked through that. Now the next bit is how do I accept payments on this online store? And Jill alluded to this, but I'd like to direct some of these questions at Graham. How many business accept payments on their on online store? Could you talk us through how that would work? <clears throat> yeah, sure, Frank. I think um, you know Jill's set the scene nicely there in terms of you know focusing on the fundamentals and getting your your website up and running. Um, and, and I think, yeah, that, that's a great overview. Fr from our perspective, you know, Cork is really a, a payments solutions focused fintech. So our focus is on really how do we provide our merchants with the ability to take payments from their customers? And I guess in, in this online world that we're talking about, there really are, uh, I guess, two, two main ways of taking those payments. The, the one is as as Jill has mentioned, you build your website, you've got your products listed, and um, you know your your customers are going to be navigating through that website, adding various products to a basket. Where we come in is is we 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 allow um, merchants to essentially plug plug in a a payment gateway, um, which will allow that basket to accept uh, payments. The, the payment methods that we that we cater for are EFT transactions and credit or debit card transactions. So what that means is if your customer gets to the checkout page, um, they will see if they've plugged in an Ecorca gateway, um, they will get the option to select to do a, a bank transfer from their bank. And, and what that simply means is you'll click a button, you'll log into your bank account, the, the, the pre predefined amount will be populated and you will essentially authorize that payment to take place and the merchant will then get paid. Um, that's, the, that's the one option. The other option is you allow the, the user to ent enter their credit or, or debit card details um, and they will go through a secure, what we call a 3D secure process, which basically you know, just protects both parties um, you know, from an information flow perspective and, and ensures that that transaction is, is secured. And we will then take that, that those funds um, off your credit card and we'll shift them through to the merchant. So the merchant will then get paid. So those are, I guess, the, the two options in terms of the website. Going back to maybe the, the, the first point around, you know, how do you start to take payments online? There are other ways to do that and, and we offer a number of other solutions. So for example, perhaps you've um, you've built your website and maybe you're a services business or you don't necessarily have products. Um, so you would go to to you know Jill's team, you would ask them to build your website. And instead of having a, a payment gateway, there's a there's the potential um, for you to you know contact the owner of that business. Um, inquire about those services and the owner has has the option then to either send you something that we call a, a payment link. So they may be able to send you, I guess, a pre invoice or a part payment or a deposit um, for a service that that you're rendering as the merchant. Um, or they could send you a, a, a digital invoice and, and really what these things um, would allow you to do as a merchant or a business owner is to email or WhatsApp um, an artifact to your customer, they'd be able to click on that artifact um, in the form of an email or a, or a link that'll open up a website 
and they would then be able to follow those two payment methods that I spoke about. So they would open up a browser or open up their mobile phone and either do an EFT payment or go down that credit card payment route. So I think there are, you know, there's quite a little, there's quite a bit of flexibility in terms of how you can take payments depending on what sort of business um, you're in and what sort of services or products you're offering. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's the broad landscape in in terms of payment services that 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 we would offer as a corker. Yeah, really nicely said, uh, Graham. There are a few ways and a few methods to accept uh, payments, and they fit different use cases. So, uh, despite how you're running your business, whether it's a service or product based business, you have a website or not have a website, there are clearly a plethora of, of uh, options with Ecoca. So really, really nicely said. Um, I'd like to transition now into you know payment methods. You uh, spoke a little bit to card payments and instant EFT. Um, over time, you know, there have been uh, a growing list or number of ways to uh, to pay from a consumer perspective. We know that today uh, people are using Apple Pay, Google Pay, but there's this idea around a virtual card. A lot of banks are now starting to issue virtual cards. Does Ecoca uh, Payment Gateway accept vir virtual cards? Yeah, frankly, we do. Um, if if the cards are issued by South African banks, um, it it pretty much works in the same way as a as a physical credit card would work. So, if your South African bank has given you a virtual card, you'll be able to use those card details, and you'll be able to check out um, on on the checkout page. Um, so yes, the, the the short answer is virtual cards are part of the the sort of ecosystem of payment methods, and you know, we, we, we've we built out a product team who is focusing on adding additional payment methods. So this is, a, I guess, a never ending game as, um, you know, as new payment methods become available and become popular, we're, we're continuously exploring ways of adding those payment methods um, to our payment gateways and to our payment link and invoice services. So, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a growing list. Great. And now just to wrap up the payment space. So we've talked through getting started online and then we wrapped it up with the costs associated. Uh, could you talk us through the costs associated with accepting payments on an online store? Sure. I, I, I guess that the very simple um, answer to that is we, we don't charge a fee for you to use our products and services. We essentially take a transaction fee um, at the point of payment. So you don't have to subscribe or you don't have to buy anything from us to use our, our online products. You can use our invoices um, for zero cost at all. You can send payment links. You can go and enable your WordPress website um, with a, a, a payment gateway plugin. That's not going to cost you anything. At, uh, at the time that your customers are essentially purchasing or, 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 or conducting a transaction, we take a 2% fee for EFT transactions and 2.85% for your credit and debit card transactions. And, and really a large part of that fee is, is our, we're a middleman, so we're a payment facilitator. The bank that's issued your card and the merchant bank that we're depositing funds into, there's a, there's what we call an interchange fee between those entities. So part of that 2.85% on your credit or debit card actually goes back to the card issuer or to the bank and we take a small portion um, and a similar sort of um, setup for for EFT. So bottom line summary, no charge to 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 make use of the payment methods, be it invoicing or payment links or or, or plugins. Um, but for every transaction that goes through your website, um, we will take 2.85% of the value of that transaction for credit and debit card transactions and 2% for EFT transactions. Sounds great, Graham. So Ecoca has eliminated the barrier to entry. Um, it's it's more of a pay as you use um, a way of working. So, so that's great to hear. Putting myself back in the shoes of our lovely business owners on the call, I have gotten started. I am super clued up on the costs associated with so i've paid those costs i've gotten my website up and running i've plugged in this payment gateway and i'm able to accept payments now i need to get my website to the world i need people to see it 
And there are a plethora of ways to do this. There's social media marketing, word of mouth. Um, there, there's so many ways to do it. Um, I'd just like to get a sense around how ready is my website for these different forms of marketing. Brett and Jill, could you talk us through um, uh, marketing readiness uh, within the website uh, that you guys have helped me put together? Sure. Um, so in terms of in terms of marketing, um, we again, we, we specialize on the website development, but we make sure that the websites are ready for market. So, you know, what's important is if you are now wanting to, uh, for example, run Google ads, um, it's exceptionally important that you have um, correct landing pages. So, you know, you have to make sure all your category pages are done or your product pages are done. You may want to run a particular product as a campaign. Um, you know, it's coming up to Valentine's Day, for example, and now you want to run a particular product. And so that product page needs to be um, ready for market. So it's important that the, the, the structure of the website is, is um, set up correctly so that you can pick and choose what you want to market, whether you, um, again, are marketing a particular range of products. Again, that needs to have a landing page. Everything need you know, when, when you're moving into the marketing space, everything everything you market needs to have is correct landing page. Because if, if I've seen um, a pair of shoes on Facebook and I click on that link, it must go to that shoe page on the website. It mustn't go to the home page. And now I have to find that pair of shoes that I saw because then I've, you've lost the sale. Um, so it's, it's very important to have the, the structure of the site set up. Again, that's why we always talk about categories. You know, you can't just have all your products on um, one page. You have to have your categories, subcategories, whatever the case is, depends how big your inventory is. Um, so we make sure that that, you know, that the site is structured for that. Um, also, the home page needs to be very well designed and informative so that if you are just doing generic advertising um, or just promoting your, um, your, your, your business and people want to land on the home and you want them to and you direct people to the, the home page, the home page needs to be informative as well. Uh, it needs to it needs to have that e-commerce feel. You know, you want to see the different categories that are that are in the website at a glance. You know, so again, you we normally we normally pull out the the um, the most popular categories that the the client has. Those are then showcased on the home page. Um, again, you'll have uh, product feeds. So um, if you're running a sale, you'll have those those feeds on the home page. Um, and featured products. So, you know, again, the design is very important to make sure it's ready for market. We have all the social links, social feeds, um, all those kind of things play a very big part in getting it ready for for marketing. And again, the mobile, because a lot of a lot of avatar, you know, a lot of people are sitting there scrolling Facebook. It must all be mobile friendly so that it also uh, relates for marketing. Sounds great, Joe. Um, just like to ask a follow-up question around uh, marketing readiness. There's uh, quite an interesting question that came through around SEO, so search engine optimization, which I believe you guys have had to, you know, structure, optimize your websites for. Could you talk a little bit, bit through, uh, maybe a, a high level, what is uh, search engine optimization and how are you enabling um, website readiness for uh, search engines like uh, Google? Mm. Yeah, but it's 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 obviously it's a it's a key component to to the website development phase. Um, so we we focus on sort of the standard uh, uh, SEO. We don't we don't move into the advanced SEO space. That is a again it's another it's a whole another industry. Um, but we 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 get the standard features done. So you know all your all your images need to be labeled correctly. All your images need to have tags. Um, so if somebody search, if somebody types it into Google, it can it can pop up. Um, all your pages need to have um, page titles, um, page descriptions, which are very important. Those then link to the actual content on the page. So you can't have your page just description being different to to what the actual page is about. It must it must relate. Um, and then we do the overall SEO where you have your your keywords. Um, that are your so we, we generally we generally get between three and five keywords or key phrases 
from each client as to what they feel people are searching for to find their products. So we don't we don't do too many. You, you try and keep it niche because that's what people are going to search for. Um, so those are important. And then you do your overall SE plan um, where you put all those keywords and key phrases in and make sure it all matches. And then we do the final um, site submission to Google search so that the search engine can start indexing the site um, and be found. But it's not a, a lot of people. Um, it's funny, a lot of people, as soon as the website's built and live, they expect to be found and come up number one on, on, on Google, which is always amusing because it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Um, it does take time and energy and money to, to get your website up. You know, a new website can't just appear first on Google. All the, all the other competitors who've been going for years and years, it just wouldn't be fair. So it does take time as long as everything is ready so that it, you can start working it. The more visits to the website, the more traffic that goes to the website, the higher it's going to come up organically. But then there obviously are the paid options of, you know, Google Ads, uh, obviously all the social media advertising one can do. Um, and yeah, but one can then go through to advanced SEO, which a lot of people then do, uh, which then will get your, get your website up organically more. Than, than the paid version. So it's it's a, it's a continual process. You can't ever stop. You just have to keep going. That sounds good. Thanks, Jill, for that uh, breakdown. Um, and, and clearly, you guys understand what it takes to get a website ready for these different marketing objectives and activities. Um, and it, I think as a team, we'll probably be, be keen in the future to explore a little bit the world of uh, marketing and sales in depth. But that's uh, a chat for another webinar. Coming back to uh, the perspective of a business owner, I have my website up and running. I have uh, the ability to accept payments uh, in different forms and shapes. I can send invoices if I need to. Um, now coming on, coming to this last bit, um, I need to get my product into the hand of my consumers. And that's uh, where Sean comes in with the logistical uh, leg. Um, last, but definitely not least, because um, a business can't really uh, continue to function without getting products and services into the hands of their customer. Um, Sean, could you talk us through um, the Bob Go solution offering, maybe focusing specifically on SMEs and how uh, Bob Go structures solutions for SMEs? Yes, so we actually proud of, pride ourselves that, um, on being structured for SMEs and um, making it easier to understand because logistics can be very difficult and getting used to it and into it, not understanding how it fully works can be a difficult part to get um, your products out there. Um, so we we really focus on also making that process as easy as possible. So we want to put out there a smart shipping solution for anyone that have never shipped anything to be able to do it. Um, and we focus on that. We actually come in play before the payment gateway um, and with the website design as well with one of our features called rates of checkout. So we can at that point already, based on our careers, tell your consumer what will they need to pay for shipping? You can pass along that cost. You can subsidize it if you want to and get that cost out of your way as well because shipping cost and the shipping leg and logistics side of e-commerce is usually the part that people forget about. And then at the end is what can make or break it as well um, because the cost can, can build up. The more you grow, the more that cost is going to grow as well because you're going to pay for your shipping. Um, so it is, it's quite a niche thing to be able to do very accurately and say this is what your client needs to pay for shipping um, and then through to our side we we want to make that process as easy as possible so we have pre-built plugins into the major e-commerce platforms as well um, including then the WordPress WooCommerce sites that Stonehut designs um, so that it's quite an easy process. It's literally a copy paste of three fields and the plugin is there already. So we then get all your order information on our side. You can do your shipping. We pre um, fetch quotes for you um, and you can ship out your parcels from our side.
That sounds really good. I was actually about to get into the the onboarding and setup process. I think uh, because of the nature of logistics, um, there tends to be this expectation that it's going to be quite complex. And what I'm hearing you say, it's it's a little bit simple. Is it as simple as what you've mentioned, or is there a little bit more to it? So it's quite simple because I think we already did all the hard work. So integrating into a career and building a solution with a, a, a provider that can ship your parcels, that it can be quite a daunting experience as well. Um, you also need to have technical capabilities to be able to do that. And I think that is where we come in quite well because we have our pre-built solutions working with um, four of our career partners. Um, that we have already built integrations with. We maintain those integrations. We make sure track and trace is available and everything is done for you um, to make that as easy as possible to get done. Sure. Sounds, sounds amazing, actually. Um, let's chat a little bit through the costs. I'm hearing, you know, uh, two sets of costs, very similar, or oh, actually not uh, too similar to, to Coca, but we have the customer uh, taking on a, a cost for delivery, then we possibly have the cost of a business owner or merchant using your services. Could you talk us through the, the breakdown and the structure of those costs and maybe even uh, allude to how much it might cost to get up and running? So um, for Bobgo, we, we have various plans to scale for you as well. So if you're quite small, there's no need to take on all the massive costs um, initially. So we have um, scaling plans that you can make use of. And that's for the subscription fee for the plugins and everything that we need to maintain from our side. Um, and then on top of that, we have then the shipping costs that need to be paid. So what we do is because we work with so many SMEs, we were met, we were able to get preferential shipping rates from couriers um, due to the, the volume that we then through our account ship with them. Um, and then we can then pass that along to the merchants where they should not or they would not necessarily have been able to get the same preferential rates with the volumes that they're going to do entering the market initially. Um, so there is a two cost involved. So on our side, it is our platform fee to, to use our integrations and our platform with all the functionality. And then separate, separate to that is the shipping cost um, that will need to be paid. So the couriers also invoice us and we also need to send that through to them, unfortunately. Um, so I think it is, it's a two prompt thing. So what will happen is at checkout when the consumer pays for shipping that through Ikorka and the payment gateway will go to the merchant. So they will receive the funds from that side and then they will pay, make payment towards the shipping to us as well. Really well uh, put and and uh, quite, I think, simple to understand now that you explain it in more detail. Uh, you talked about enabling tracking, which was uh, one of the, the key questions. Um, I'm a business owner and all these orders are going through. Can I track these orders? Um, clearly, you guys have that in the bag already. Uh, could you talk us through pickup points? These are quite popular uh, during the pandemic and, and they've you know, become uh, increasingly popular uh, now um, as an alternative to uh, delivering straight to uh, the consumer. Uh, do you guys offer uh, this idea or offer the service of pickup points? So it is, it's fairly a new space um, out there. So we, we are looking to enter that market more and more where we're at now. So one of our sister companies being as part of Bob Group um, is called Bob Box. And we are busy rolling out a locker solution um, currently as well. Um, so we are working towards getting into the pickup um, point um, space. And then we also are looking to partner with more providers and career partners, et cetera, in those spaces as well. Um, so it is, we are getting there. Um, I'm pretty sure, hopefully, but before Black Friday this year, we should have a solution there. Okay, we'll all keep our fingers crossed in that regard, but uh, great to hear that it is within your roadmap and uh, should be coming up soon. Uh, could you talk a little bit to delivery times? Um, how do you guys structure uh, delivery times? When do deliveries happen? Uh, when are deliveries out of times and, and, and schedules? Uh, chat to us a little bit about that. 
So it is, it's more about the service that the couriers offer and the service providers offers from that side. So they have set out various service level agreements and SLAs that they have to adhere to. And we group that together and we try and consolidate they, that into an express shipment. So usually your overnight or if it's in a regional, a little bit further area, um, that will be maybe an extra day to get that delivered, but it's still the quickest solution for a traditional courier door to door solution. And then you have your economy, which is more your standard shipping solution, which is usually a three to five day service or two to four day service, depending on the collection and delivery location. Um, and with that, with our plugin for rates at checkout that we have, um, where the consumer pays for checkout, we actually provide them with the choice to say what type of delivery. Do I want to pay an extra 20 Rand to get a quicker delivery? Um, and some of these options can be same day options, some are overnight, some are three to five days. So, um, and with that, we also manage the expectation for when the delivery will take place at checkout. Um, and that also takes into account the, the time that the merchant will need to pick and pack and get that parcel ready for shipping. Sounds great. Sounds really great. Um, talk us through delivery coverage. How, you know, what, what areas and regions do you guys cover um, within, within SA? And, you know, uh, could you just elaborate a little bit around uh, how you guys structure thinking around coverage? Yes, so, so currently um, all our career partners enable us to provide solutions nationally within South Africa. So anywhere within South Africa, we can get a parcel delivered there um, by the click of a button. So for us, it is very important that the coverage in South Africa enables you to get to everyone because you do not want to lose a sale because you can't ship a parcel to them. So that is something that that we put a massive focus on. Um, then venturing a little bit, dabbling in the space of looking to go for at least neighboring countries international. Um, so that's also on the cards and on the roadmap for us. Um, so coverage wise, um, couriers do classify areas based on location, so main centers are preferential because of the volume that happens there and they are based there. Then you have your regional areas, which is a little bit outside of your main centers, um, and then local being within the same main center as you are shipping from. Um, and then the rates, they do vary based on those classifications thereof. Something that is very important, some areas within our country are unsafe and they are classified as high risk areas. Um, it is a little bit the cost involved to get deliveries done in those areas do go up significantly because of the security that needs to be added to get those shipments done successfully. Thanks for that, Sean. Really appreciate the transparency and that level of detail. Um, I'm just going to round up now with a question I'd like to direct at uh, all the experts on the call. Um, I'll start off with uh, Brett and Jill, move on to Graham, and then end off with Sean. There, there's quite a, a key question uh, coming from, you know, the, our audience around how might a business, you know, within the current uh, economic and competitive climate and landscape remain, you know, competitive um, and meet the needs of their customer? It is uh, quite a, a, you know, big question to answer, uh, but I think within your key areas of expertise, could you maybe talk to uh, what are the ways in which a business could, uh, you know, strategically and uh, uh, competitively di differentiate themselves? Um, let's start off with uh, Brett and Jill within the online store space, the e-commerce space, where, where are the ways in which a, a business could uh, differentiate themselves and remain competitive? Mute. Brett, you are on mute. You're on mute. Brett. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, from our side, a lot of it is having the website that really can showcase your products and build trust uh, with your audience. I think that's very, very important. Um, and to stand out, stand out about, you know, amongst your competitors, have that uh, advantage, uh, show um, your shipping um, and your courier 
integrations that are all there and in place and secure. You're working with trustworthy partners. I think that's very important. And I think if I can just add to that, it just goes back to a well-run website. You know, as we say, we 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 all shop online and they're, they're good and they're bad. And the bad ones, you just don't want to go back to. <laughs> so I think, you know, it just, if your website is user friendly and it works and it's seamless, you're going to have repeat customers and that's all that people want. If they know they can, you know, get a good service from you online, they're going to go keep going back to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's just key. It, it really boils down to a, a well, a well run website because there are so many bad ones out there and they just make the whole user experience just really bad and you just it, it, it puts you off using them so I, I think if you you know if you if you want to remain competitive um you you have to keep 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 your website in order <laughs> yeah well put thank you guys i'm just going to move on to the payment acceptance space with graham what are the ways in which a business uh, can remain competitive yeah, <clears throat> good Fred question, Frank. I, I, I mean, I think, you know, as a corker, we, we, we definitely um, support the, the the sort of emerging economy and, and the small and medium sized enterprises. So first and foremost, if you're sitting with an idea, if you're wondering about, you know, should you should you launch this product? Should you do create this little side hustle? We work with incredible um, entrepreneurs who are whether they're writing books and wanting to sell their stories or making jewelry in their kitchen, like these little side hustles are happening all over the show. So I think the fir our first message is like really back yourself to to get that idea up and running. And, and you can, in a very cost effective way, you can create an online presence. You can, um, you know, take payments online and get your, your parcels or your services delivered. Like I think, you know, today's session has really been about um, talking through what those options look like. And um, our message is, you know, from a from a payment perspective, you know, we, we're offering very, very affordable rates compared to some of the other players for entry level businesses. That's our sweet spot. Um, don't be intimidated by bigger players. There's so much opportunity for for niche local um service you know in, in our market so back yourselves um speak to speak to some of the partners on the call um and and don't sit on your ideas i i think our message is just get out there and and, and experiment and um like a lot of these things will start to improve and, and your businesses will start to grow over time really well put and uh uh definitely agree with a lot of the points mentioned uh, from both you, uh, Graham, Brett, and Jill, um, around user friendliness, getting started, and, and really just offering, you know, the best rates and best options for business owners to get up, off the ground, get get up and running. Um, I'd just like to, uh, you know, channel it now to, to Sean. Just talk us through, you know, from your perspective, um, how a business can remain competitive within this current climate. So we have a massive saying in our world that says under promise and over deliver. Um, and I think it is something that that you can do very well, be transparent, make sure that your your customers know exactly where they are in the journey so far, um, which is why solutions and partnering with brands and putting a, lo a logo next to your logo with someone that that is well known in the space. Um, and partnering with people that can offer the full solution that you can know will do your brand well. Um, I think that is how, how people will trust you and how you can remain competitive and work with the people that's there to help you. Um, the, there's companies like Stonehut and Nkorka and us at Bobco, we want to see small SME businesses thriving um, and we'll go out of our way to try and help you to get there. What well, a nice way to end it off and wrap it up. Um, we are, you know, standing behind you, uh, business owners. We're backing you up and we want to offer you this, you know, 360 ability to accept payments online or uh, have your store transition online, accept payments online and really deliver value to your customer as soon as possible. Um, so I'm just going to end it off there um, and close off with a reminder around our exciting 10 easy e-commerce jumpstart 
packages um, that are will be given to uh, uh, ten uh, essential individuals who have um, signed up for this uh, webinar. Um, it contains fifty percent off on website design from from Stone Hut. Uh, designs. We planned to talk a little bit through what uh, each subset of this of this uh, package contains. So I'm going to just run through it, and then I'm going to ask uh, the uh, individuals on the call just to talk through what the package contains in in their regard. So 50% off on website design from Stone Hat Designs, 20% off on payment gateway rates from Ecoca for three months, and then the free gold delivery subscription from Bob Go for three months. Maybe I'll just start off with uh, Britt and Jill on the call around that 50% off on website design from Stone Hut Designs. Uh, what does that entail? What does that package entail? Um, sure. So it's it's a, it's a new website, new website development, or obviously if somebody needs a revamp and it's, we, we move into a different platform. Um, so it's a WordPress website um, and it's the full UI UX design uh, that we do for all our clients. So the you know full design of the website incorporating obviously the client's logo, color scheme and brand um, and um, integration with uh, WooCommerce, which is the platform that runs the online store. It's setting up three categories and 25 products. It doesn't include variants at this stage, um, but that can always that can always be added. Um, and I think I touched on it earlier. It includes a few basic um, content pages. You know, you need your about us, uh, contact, uh, uh, privacy policy, refunds and returns. So those general um, uh, uh, content pages. It includes social media links. It includes the full payment integration. And we do, you know, when we say payment integration, we do a full testing um, to make sure uh, a full order goes through. Customize emails when uh, payment, when an order is done, the client needs to get their invoice and the client needs to get their order. Uh, full shipping integration, mobile design, um, standard SEO, and site submission to to Google. Yeah. So the only thing, yeah. So there are a few things that are not included, which is obviously important to point out as well. So that again is transparent. So hosting is not included, and I mentioned that's about one five a year. Um, and uh, there's no emails included. That can also be set up though. Um, domain registration it doesn't include. So again, if it's a new business, that we would need to obviously register the domain. Um, product variants uh, doesn't include that and then any advanced sort of customization or features that are required. So it's your entry level uh, e-commerce website to get a business off the ground, which is the, per the perfect sort of package to, to do that. Yeah. Thanks for that, Jill. Um, despite all the exclusions, still quite extensive, and that 50% off, I think it's something to bite at, definitely. Now, moving on to that 20% off on the payment gateway for three months. Uh, Graham, could you talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, sure, Frank. Um, as I mentioned, you know, our, our fees really are, are made up of um, a transaction fee when your customers check out um, of your website or, or, or pay for your services via an invoice or, or a payment link. Um, we will reduce those fees for the first three months. And um, in addition to that, I think, you know, we, we, we have a, a team of, of support people that are on standby. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you're setting up and, and, and you go with a payment gateway plugin and you're needing help generating those keys or helping facilitate, um, you know, how, how to use our sales dashboard to track your orders, um, we've got a team of people that will, will hold your hand through that process. And uh, yeah, we'd like nothing better than to see those transactions flowing through your business um, and it, and it's starting to grow. So that's um, we're we're on standby to help uh, from that from that regard. Thanks, Graham. And moving on to the free gold delivery subscription from Bobgo, Sean, uh, could you talk us through what that looks like? So um, something that I forgot to mention a little bit earlier is that based on our plans, um, the higher your plan with the vo amount of volume in shipments that you do, we also are able to, to get your shipping rates to be a little bit cheaper per plan that you are on. Um, so on our gold, gold plan, it is our most preferential um, shipping rates that you can get. So we are then giving a we already have a trial or a 30 day trial that you can register for with Bob Go. Um, and then we will add another additional three months worth of gold plan benefits um, that you can also find on our website 
to get to the best shipping rates at the cheapest cost available without having to pay that monthly subscription fee. Thank you so much. And there you have it, done and dusted. We are standing behind you, business owners. Great package coming your way uh, to just get you up and running. Um, look forward to seeing all these uh, businesses, you know, uh, successfully transition online. Um, and I'll just like to end off with a um, a warm thank you to all our lovely guests that have joined us on the call today, uh, building all the questions and giving us uh, a view of how a business can get online, accept payments, and then deliver uh, their products and services to their customer. Um, and, and thank you all for the helpful insights on the topic, um, everything um, in, in relation to e-commerce. So uh, that's that's about it. And um, I'd like to thank the guests for joining, uh, all the guests that have joined. Thank you for all the lovely questions. Um, and until next time, uh, we'll see you at our next webinar where we'll discuss uh, another element of how you could get your business up and running. So cheers, everyone. Have a wonderful